power, will or a fire with this composition force a game three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Land of Dawn to witness the perhaps potentially the conclusion of this series. It's a very good assessment actually, Eterna, like you mentioned. The winning lanes for Aura, the the lanes you can actually say are winning lanes are very execution based too. So it's literally gonna come down to how Aura plays these lane matchups. Kabuki, I love the change already. The fact that they picked up the Paquito here uh, shows that they understand Kabuki needs to carry. On the high and dry as well, this is a very carryable hero. Keyboy almost just steals that Ooh. away. But it's both teams just playing it very, very slow. Drion in the mid lane. Mobility being the big key to victory for game number one. I think it's a proper response to. The reason they pick up the Faramis here is because the Faramis can actually match the wave clear and mobility from the Farsa. We'll see. Execution based, right? Right now we can see that the Lolita High is actually going to start prioritizing that bottom lane, trying to help the Claude get to that power spike a little bit faster, realizing that he is going against CW. Oh. But look at the aggression as well, the response coming in from Facehugger. Good response, honestly, right? Uh, not much to do for Aura Fire here. Ooh. They don't have a lot of kill pressure, but on the other side, remember again, Lapu starts at level four. Low one to three, you're pretty much not in the game. And Ana Esports seems to be playing around that, right? Yeah. They're trying to play for their strong side, and they are going to be able to get a lot of gold onto Boots as well. But it seems like Kabuki, Facehugger, trying to help clear out that lane. But you're right, for the first few moments of the game, Seems like Aura Fire might be able to utilize that top side. That first blood can be costly here for the side of Lapu Lapu. You're right. I mean, Yu Zong, once he got it rolling, he gets it rolling. It's going to be hard here now for Aura Fire to perhaps make a play from that Lapu Lapu. The first turtle, though, now, turtle dance. Let's see, Kyrie, four members is in the vicinity. Meanwhile, Aura Fire responds with four as well. Hi now, Will, try to open. Oh. We have a spider on towards the back side, but Cole Alter in the front side will not help. Kyrie will secure the first turtle now. Kabuki, though, gets taken down. Drian also traded back. Kai will be next on the chopping block. It's a 3 4 1 trade, basically. I love the Kabuki. I love that Kabuki picked up something like the Paquito. I agree with you, Mirko, in that sense. More kill pressure, definitely, for their team. But the problem is when they go for those 5v5 around the turtle. He's susceptible oh. to the CC coming in from Keyboy, which is exactly what Keyboy did. Picking up something like the Martis would have been a little bit more safe. But looking at the Talon's prediction now, nothing really has changed from game number one. And, you know, you guys are right. And it's not looking too good for Aura Fire as well here in game number two. On a Esports leading with a 1,700 gold lead despite being able to lose that top side. But I think... Luffy now, already level 5, that explains it. Yeah, and to add on to your point, right, you mentioned that Kabuki, this matchup is just not a really good matchup against something like the Grok, but even against the Fredrin, this is why I gasped in the draft as well, and they're going for another. Hi, will it be taken down, and Kyrie will pick up that kill. Wow, that was a... That was an engage from Onik Esports, committing, committing on towards high, perhaps realizing that he has no flicker. I think it's just the wrong timing of when the Paquito gets picked, right? Because if they picked up the Paquito in game number one, they could have denied that pick away from Kyrie, and ultimately they would have been able to build on that Paquito. Meanwhile, in game number two, they really need a utility jungler, like you said, Martis, or anti-CC, or even Benedetta would have actually worked here, right? With the eye for an eye against something like a Fredrin that locks you down. Paquito doesn't have any of those ability skills to really get away. Once you jump in, you get taunted up, you get knocked out by the Fredrin, you're squishy. You're a glass cannon on the Paquito. You don't have someone like a Dairoth to facilitate that penetration early on. And it ultimately feels like even here, when they are, you know, at a disadvantage in the drafts, they're also at a disadvantage in the rotations. They're playing towards their weak side of the map. Remember, Lapu against Yuzong, winning matchup for Yuzong. They even established that with the first blood, yet they still committed onto the turtle instead of maybe playing towards Onyx's weak side. CW is wide open for the taking. This is what a lot of teams were able to exploit at M4. But ladies and gentlemen, before we get more into the discussion, we would just like to say that we are in a technical pause. And it does seem like this technical pause is coming from Onik. So we have a little bit more time to go into the... Composition. No, the... the podcast. The podcast. The English Broadcast Podcast. That's a lot of casts. <laughs> and of course, fair play is our utmost priority. We want to yep. make sure that both of these teams all the players have the best of the best, and they are going in 
with everything that they can with the best as well because we want the best and the podcast is the best yeah the best of the Let's best talk about the real talk right? all right all right all right palevi yeah do you believe in this guy for our fire of course season nine first our best coach getting the first ever with high, best coach with high, title best jungler. with high best jungler first team he's now a roamer but he still got it in the bag now Oh, Even he, though is Palevi, he aiming, wait, wait, is he aiming to become the best roamer now? Hi, yeah, kind of rhyme. No, I, I wanted to like, I, I, I thought in my head that it rhymed with Yaoi for some reason, <laughs> and then I thought about it. I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> what? So no, Hai doesn't rhyme with Yaoi, and maybe no. the playstyle differs a bit. Where Hai can utilize his creativity. I think that's what he can really utilize in the roaming position, okay. as opposed to Godiva, who's pretty predictable in the drafts, right? Kadita banned out. Ruby, Ruby, Rolita. maybe. Yeah, yeah. And Cho, Cho. Cho. Kufra, right? Yeah, Kufra but sometimes. Again, signature picks has to be Kurita Ruby. We've seen him on the Minsethar back then, but it oh, hasn't true. really worked out too much. He's he's actually picked up the Mardis in the Rome. Also true. True. Before it was cool. <laughs> it was not <laughs> cool today. Cool. It's a jungler it's not, now, not a Rome. Well, nobody picked the Mardis, is what I meant. Oh. He boy has no medicine and English oh, no. comment. Is he sick? Is he sick though? That's 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 <laughs> a real question. I don't think so. I think, I think what they meant sick. to say is, you you can't fight him, right? Okay. There's, you can't. There's no medicine for Keyboy. He is the sickness for Aura. <laughs> wow. Not for Onik. He is the power of Onik, okay. but he is a he is a big negative for Aura. Okay. You don't want to face this guy. I'm gonna throw a saying. statement. I'm gonna throw okay. a statement. Just say, do you agree or not? Okay. He okay. boy is the best roamer in the league. Disagree. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Disagree. <laughs> Who's there? Who, who, who are you? In the league. In this league. In oh, this in league. This league. Yeah, in, in this the league. league. In this okay, league. stop thinking about Yaoi, purple hair. Sorry. Oh, Yaoi. But okay. um, I would say Key. I would agree. Well, you yes. saw no, I'm joking. But I, th I still think Key boy is a bit more creative. There's a whole lot to his game uh, as opposed to Key. I think. The Kadita diff is a big okay. um, comparison. It's full period. Next statement, right? All right. Persic is better than Taz. Disagree. Now. Massive disagree. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, okay. I'm just throwing out statements. All right? I'm just throwing out statements. Aura Fire will win. Agree, disagree. Let's get back into the game, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Troubleshooting here. Oh, this is MPL. Date. X. MPL date. There you go. That's no, where it's at. No, he did check for both. Oh, there's a check for both? Yeah. There's a cross on the screen, though. Oh, there's a cross because it was done. It's done. Ah, it's another list. Went. It's done. Yeah, see? So they went on a date at M4, and now they're on a date oh. here at MPL. Again, the keyboard has no medicine. That guy. That guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Do you know him? Did you pay him to, to write that I or think something? That's Derek. Oh, it's Derek. Derek Yosenfar. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> right? Let's again dissect the game. Okay, the draft. Yeah. Now, Ghani. You see, this doesn't work. I can't ask you why you went for Onik uh, in the town prediction. You know what, Mirko? Why do you think Onik has the better draft, right? Winning lanes, Mirko. Winning lanes. It's simple, the board. Yeah. objective, aggressive as well. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. I, do you want it to tell them about no. that? The it's that simple meme? Oh, it's that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys don't know, there the man, go. the myth, the legend himself, Adi, Adi, was questioned by the media right after his game against Blacklist International. Why didn't you ban the Estes? When as was long that? as you play objectively, it's that simple. It's that simple. So n now everyone uses it's that simple, but it seems like we are going straight back into oh. the game, but Fluffy already going in. Kyrie now being the recipient Ooh. of a lot of damage. Still surviving. Juyan covering from the backside with that feather airstrike. Turtle now is up high. Needs to recall that's a man advantage from Onik Boots. With that black dragon form, we'll able to zone away Lapu Lapu. So another clean objective take from the side of the yellow porcupines. Not much to do if your aura are in that particular situation, right? There's just so much thrown at you. You tried your best to burst Kyrie down, but he's able to utilize his passive on these neutral objectives. So he gets back to like almost full HP and takes it for basically nothing because he is also in the lead one level against Kabuki. And 
this is something we just really need to highlight, right? CW in the winning lane, or the losing lane, actually, is always winning. He's a very good weak side player, and Onik can utilize it as a strong side with the roam. But their air strike hasn't popped. That's information high now. Trying to jump in tight, though. Will be able to clear, but now looking for an engage, perhaps. Space Sugger is there. No commitments from both teams. But in the sense, even though you mentioned that maybe CW is in a losing lane, it doesn't appear that CW, no, it doesn't appear that Chayid has the same amount of flexibility when it comes to dishing out the damage because he has to go in for that full going in with the Blazing Duet. And the problem is the damage take that he's receiving from Adrian wow. is so much that he's barely able to dish out the damage. And if we take a look at the items here, Beatrix already with the BOD. It's super smart there. Actually, he did not finish his boots. This is something that we've seen from Kyrie, and we can see CW trying to do the same thing in the gold lane, right? Not finishing up the boots, just getting the first little boot before he goes for the actual real boots. Then, he buys the BOD, and he actually also picks up um, a little bit of penetration there, right? So, it's a really good build, honestly, is what I'm trying to say. And with the goal lead that he has and the team has, just look at Kyrie and Kabuki. This is just a matchup that we were talking about. Jungle matchup very heavily favoring Kyrie and also CW using his siege potential to move up top with the Bennett now that the gold buffed minions have disappeared from lane. We'll the see. next neutral objective has been secured. But like, I guess Yannick yeah, Esports with the 4,000 gold lead now. What will they do? Turtle Dance, will Kabuki commit on towards this one? Yannick Esports looking for the setup. Rion with a feather air strike as well, but Keyboy will flicker away as Kyrie secures the neutral objective. Cold Alter has been popped, but now Fluffy in a no man's land will try to find a kill onto his Keyboy. No way. Does not get it as now Fluffy looks for an escape. Drion will secure the kill. Fluffy gets taken down and also high there. So two for zero trade for Onik Esports. And now they're just snowballing up until this point, right? 4,000 gold lead. Chai trying to do what Chai does best, which is not have an impact in the team fights. He just goes in for the side lane pushes. You saw the claw where he was. He yeah. was in the top. He was split pushing, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, split pushing, I think not joining team fights. I think split pushing is what he not does best team here fights. with the claw. Um, he's grabbing turrets just so that you guys can grab food with the discount code. 26,000 IDR, jrb.to slash MPL. Scan the QR code here as CW does the same thing ultimately, right? Chide was able to pick up a tier one. Now they're going for it. Aura wants to collapse on Keyboy. Oh my god, is this the right move? Oh, oh no. charge. A oh simple ultimate popped. And Keyboy is saved now. The re-engage, perhaps. In the backside, Kabuki caught Kyrie securing the kill. Boots now popping that feather. No, black dragon form just to zone the members. Another turret take top side. You can just say that was outclassed, right? And look at that high. What? Petrified to cancel high, and he gets taken down. Facehugger as well. Facehugger down, though. Will shut down a member now. Facehugger 1v3 under the turret. CW needs to be careful. He survives that one, but it's still favoring Onik. It was already bad that Aura Fire got outplayed in a 3v1 situation where Keyboy was able to outplay that situation. It's even worse when Hyde looks for an opening with the Numeron Blast and it gets cancelled and it gets instantly traded back again by Onyx Esports. Outclassed, man. Real-time win probability by the Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G even agrees. 63% for Onyx Esports. It's going to take a lot for Aurifier to come back wow. again in this game. It's going to get from bad to worse, right? Because Aurifier's composition really relies on the Cult Altar working here. And the thing is, the Cult Altar isn't really going to work. If they clump up together, it's just Onik with a massive advantage with their AOE damage and their poke. They're going for the Lord. Oh, oh no, Kabuki. Kyrie will secure the Lord, though. High gets knocked up. Boots trying to zone out Kide. Take a look at that life still forcing that call alter high. Will die in the process in the front lines. It's going to be 1 4 0 kill wise. Again, Onyx securing the Lord. And the turret down below, right? Oof. They're just sieging, capitalizing on every little mistake that Aurifier are making. And again, it's Aurifier 
going back to the default plays here, they're not really trying to make, they're trying their best to look for an opening, but they're going for the default plays, which means neutral objective, contest. And Onik are able to capitalize every single time because they have a massive advantage already when it comes to the gold lead. Look at the items. It speaks for itself. Hunter Strike, Melfic Roar, uh, building to a heptasis now. This Beatrix is out of control. Five, zero, and one. At this point, we can see what Skyler did to Heise, I believe, or no, to Rizal. Was it the two shot yesterday mm. on Nibiru? That's something that CW can look for now with the amount of damage and the amount of items he has. This early on, 10 minutes, it's unreal for CW to have these, these many items. And the worst part is he's on a Beatrix, right? Because if the Claude was leading, then CW, if he was behind, he could pick up something like the WON, mm -hmm. which can negate that entire burst of the ultimate of the Blazing to Wet. But if you're someone against, if you're against someone like CW on the Beatrix, whose shots aren't burst, burst. and she has so many options in her kit to utilize and to put damage on the opponent, you can go one for the first maybe Renner shot, but after that, it's just, yeah. it's tough, it's tough. It's very tough. Lord managed though by Aura, Fluffy taking the health top side early on, but it's gonna be two inner turrets taken down now. Aura Fire defending their base turrets. On it, it seems like they are still disciplined enough, not forcing any engages for now. Just setting up once again to go for the siege down below as they have taken the tier twos in the mid lane and that top lane. Onik can just keep on doing this again, sieging with the Renner and with the goalie that they have, they're not really at risk of Aura Fire engaging because the only way Aura Fire engages or look for oh no, Kabuki, he just I think he got spotted here. Oh Keyboy's no. gonna walk him down and he spots him. Kabuki all alone, conceal. There you go. Yeah, now Kabuki trying to find the escape. He does not get it. CW picking up that monster kill or a fire. Just one tiny mistake, tiny miss rotation, completely punished by Onik. 6,800 gold lead, guys. Onik Esports. And they're starting to push the mid and the top lane to try and clash at the same time. We'll see as Drian opens it up. Yeah, third airstrike on towards face sugger now. The Lapu. Trying to find a play in the backside. Chai though with that blazing duet entering the oh. zone of CW flickers away. Still surviving that one. Aura Fire, they have their power spikes in season like. They have to understand here that even though Onik are, have a massive advantage, 6.5k gold lead that Aura Fire can still come back. They are a team that can rely on that late game damage from Chai. And with him opting to go for the win of nature, it means that he is going to be uh, you know, he can make these risky plays happen in the back line. The reason he hasn't been joining team fights is to reach that power spike. And now he has finally gotten that power spike. It's just now up to Onik as to how they try to bait that win of nature out. Because if Orofire can utilize that, and if Chai can actually deal the damage properly into the back line, just as I say that, CW picks up a Haas Claws and Drian picks up a win in the, uh, Winter Truncheon. So, already an answer instantly. Respect already being placed here by Onik Esports and Kyrie even picked up the Athena shield to negate the damage coming in from Facehugger. But Drian looks like he's looking for a play, maybe. Are they going to commit on towards this one? And now Boos are popping that Black Dragon for and Feather Airstrike as well. A key boy taking a lot of damage, but take a look at the winner's direction. Oh, Kabuki steals the Lord. In the backside, Fluffy 3v1ing will not be able to find anything. Godlock secured. It seems like oh, no. Onik Esports, they realize they will win the fight. Face hugger now munched by three members oh. here, pulled back, but not enough damage. Say bye bye. Oh, the magic worship goes through. He gets taken down now. It's gonna be two for one, but the Lord has been secured by the side of Aura. Very strange way to actually execute that team fight. They decide to go for the team fight instead of the Lord, despite having a super big gold lead that I've just been repeating over and over again. They didn't set up the waves. Instead of that, they went for the full commit. There was a little bit of a disconnect there where Kyrie actually was trying his best to zone or fire away. Meanwhile, CW was still hitting that Lord. And these little mistakes that Onik are making can give Aura Fire a way back into the game with the gold already here, getting to a point where the lead almost doesn't matter, right? Look at the Claude, almost full items. Just one steal, one item slot away from full items. Literally, he has a steel leg plates. He can just go for an immortality now and it's done. Onik have 
basically kind of given Aura Fire more time to play with. Faramis as well, we saw the damage he was able to do just then, despite being behind, right? Now, with a few shutdowns, he's back. Two kills on the board, and he's already in the same department as the Farsa. Already same goal. Damage dealt, though. Facehugger miles Ooh. ahead of Drian. Oh, that's surprising, right? I guess because he's able to go in really clear. And every time you see Drian trying to pop in that Feather Airstrike, it instantly gets cancelled by Fluffy. So the disparity in damage doesn't make sense. Facehugger also already has a Divine Glaive for that instant penetration, even though the members from Onyx Esports already built that Athena shield. I don't know. Somehow, Drian needs to be able to position better. Maybe figure out where Fluffy is first before he opens up a really huge resources like the Feather Airstrike, or it's just going to be a waste because that's a huge commodity that Onyx Esports can actually utilize in those team fights. That burst is perfect for that initial fight where later on CW and Boots can finish the members of Aura Fire off. See here, Keyboy now. Oh, ball charge instantly. Whoa. Now Fluffy will get stunned, but no follow-up damage just yet here. Dreon. Triggering discipline there does not commit blindly. And now it's just a reset here because it seems like 25 seconds the Lord will spawn. So both teams now, they need it to be careful. Onik in game one. Oh my goodness, it's almost a steal by Keyboy there. But yeah, yeah, back in game one, we saw this happen. Onik had the lead. They did not give proper space, didn't go for just the clears. They instead looked for fights that can give Orifier a way back into the game, and it did in game number one. They were able to recover, and now Onik basically did the same thing. They got slapped in the face by Orifier, and now they're back to the discipline route. Slow pushing in that bottom lane, building a push as well in the top lane. Orifier do not have pressure here. Fluffy, look at his positioning. He's down below. Now if Onik actually pulls the trigger and goes for a fight, Orifier are going to be at a disadvantage. And this is the dilemma that Fluffy is, you know, is experiencing. What does he have to do? He's constantly not showing up on the map, but he isn't showing up in the Lord Pit as well. Now he finally shows up on the map and Onik can pull the trigger. Let's see, right? Oh, Drian Keyboy, conceal play. Hi now, being the recipient of all, everything. Kabuki, oh, CW gets the Lord. No junglers commit on towards that one now. Kabuki in the backside will not find anything as tied. Gets bursted down by the feathered airstrike. 5v4, Aura Fire. Retreating fully. That's so onic. Is that not super onic? That way that they just played that Lord fight. They always do that. They always look for a way to split it 4v5. When they know they have the mad advantage, then that's when they pull the trigger. And that's exactly what they did. They did it perfectly. And Aura Fire had no choice but to play into the way that Onic Esports set that up. And it was beautiful. Cancelled that new known blast. Now, oh. Drian with the Feather Airstrike. Can they end? Still four members defending this one, as it seems like Onik, their main focus should be the base turrets. Should, it really should, and they're just gonna go for the slow push once again, right? Bottom side, with two waves crashing now, Aura Fire are going to have to send more members down, but look at Keyboy, he gets shredded down! Mm, Fluffy trying to find the stun and not connecting. Boots with the Black Dragon Fawn as well, just to somehow zone the members away. Facehugger needs to retreat with that Feather Ray Strike. Oh. Call Alter forced to be popped. Onik, three base turrets down. Let's retreat and reset. They did that without Chide using his Blazing oh. Duet at all, but they might go and commit onto this. Fluffy finding the lifesteal now. Kyrie gets done. No clear follow up. Oh, that got, that, that got me, right? I thought that was the play, but now on Esports, yeah, with the reset. It's just a slow push once again for Onik, right? It's basically them choking Aura Fire out, right? It's very slow, but it's super efficient. Now, Aura Fire are suffocating slowly but surely, despite the items already being built up. They have gotten full items, but now the reason the you know Mobile Legends is played in this way is because with map pressure, even if you have a massive gold lead, you're not really going to be able to say much. Let's say Onik actually pushes out all the waves and gets wiped out. Now, with the death timer, surely Orifier can get a few turrets on the board. But if they've cleared the wave in a particular way, Aura won't be able to get anything. This is it, interesting, though. Yeah. Miracle. Beatrix's items? It's pretty interesting, right? He I mean, just sold for the one? Yeah, he sold the boots for the win of nature. So, 
with uh, added sustain as well with the Haas Claws and the Wind of Nature, you can basically hit a minion once, I believe, and get to full HP. Also, that's really a really good item up against the backline presence or backline pressure that Aura Fire has. But again, oh, oh. my high! Uh, still has the Immortal though, but now is that the right engage high now? Chunked with that information on it can take and set the Lord fight properly. Aura Fire, what was high doing there? 20 minutes already has elapsed, and we're getting to that point where a single team fight is going to matter. The death timers are insane. A single mistake is going to cost you an Autic Esports. They're going to go straight in for the Lord. Yeah, Chide now. Interesting. In the front side, blazing duets wildly. Lord, let's see who gets it. Retribution battle. It's going to be Kabuki finding one. Now Kai gets taken down. Now Autic forcing that fight. Gets the stun though. Is this enough? A lot of Immortals bought. And as well as the winner's front and Drian finding Kabuki in the process. Four members still on that manhunt. Two for one for that Lord. A key boy though. Will survive for now, but whose team won that trade? Orifier, for sure. They buy more time to stay in this game, but Onik can actually choose to push in this mid lane, maybe going for an end with the Lord down below. So don't count them out just yet. Don't count them out just yet now. Four members rotating towards the mid side. Feather and Strike Pop. Hi, trying to cancel that out. Bluffy finding two. No follow up though. CW deals massive damage. Facehugger gets taken down by Kyrie. They're looking for the end. Fluffy, no immortal high, gets taken down. Onik, are they looking for the end? No minions in the mid. Adrian, oh. no immortal. Raised by Wings is tied with that blazing duet. Not enough damage, it seems like, to melt the members from Onik. Oh, wow. wow. I was on the edge of my seat. I would have thought Audit Esports would be able to cancel that. I mean, to end that. But now they got to think about the Lord that's marching down in the bottom side. They made a gamble and they are going to be able to clear it as fast as possible. But man, what was that play by Chai? He was the first person to go in, the first person whoa, whoa. to get taken out. But, but he got taken down and now on an esports they might want to go for this once again wild charge not connecting but take a look at the backside Kyrie and kabuki 3v1 and say bye bye chai with the blazing duet will not find anything it's actually face Sugger picking up a kill now chai with the bmi ex exiting that premises cw will survive as it's just now onic esports will end the game and it seems like there's Onik, no minions there are no minions still surviving or a fire is now still in the game. Oh, it could be delaying the inevitable, but we're going to take that, right? The real-time win probability is still in favor of Onyx Esports by the Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G, 74%. But somehow, Aura Fire is still able to stay in the game after Onyx Esports have pushed three times. And you can start to see that Onyx Esports, they're getting pressure to end the game as soon as possible. Crazy, crazy defense here from Aura Fire. Wow. Able to again go against the odds despite them being so behind. Look at the kill score 21 to 3. Look at the gold yeah. lead. Look <laughs> at everything, right? They are able to push Onik back here and there always. And still, it's Onik with a 6,000 gold lead, but at this point of the game, the gold lead is gone. Zero. It does not matter at all. What matters is the map pressure. But with Onik playing the way they are, the map pressure doesn't really matter. Not going to go for the mini waves. They're just going to go for fights, 50 50s across the board in the Lord Pit. And that's the same tactic that Bigatron likes to use. And Bigatron usually are the ones to get the upper hand, especially when the, with this Lord tick. And you can see here Aura Fire. They're going to go straight in for the Lord. But Kyrie, Onik, they're going to have something to say about this. They set this up properly here, Aura Fire. Are they going to commit to this, though? Let's see Onik trying to gain more ground in that Lord Dance, but no commitments. Can Lord reset. will be reset it now. Onik still with the somehow lead. Keep is so annoying, but look at this conceal play. Conceal play. Will they commit on towards this one? Fluffy now. Which could be the target, but again, no proper engage, so no commitment. 
there's not much to commit to right now, right? Again, Onyx are finally going back to their roots here, clearing out the ways, properly setting up before they actually go for the Lord. The Lord Dance is truly a Lord Dance now, as opposed to the 50-50 commitments that Onyx have just been going for. Now, you can already see top side slow pushing Lapu in the bottom lane. If they want to go for a fight, it might just be right now, but it should just be Onyx moving back and forth, waiting for that slow push that they built up in the top lane to finally crash into the base before pulling the trigger, ultimately to, uh, to get the full free enhanced or evolved Lord at this point of the game. Lapu clearing top side. That's going to be information for Onik to just go and go fight, perhaps. But no, nobody's pulling the trigger. As now, yeah, there you go. Wild charge, Black Dragon form, Cult Alter popped with that feather airstrike. Chide? No, no casualties here as Chide is surviving that one with a trench now popped from Gian. Stun though, connecting. Kyrie falls, and this is huge. Aura of fire, the Red Dragons are responding back. Oh, it seems like Boots here might be caught. Fluffy goes in once again. Oh, with the Furious Dive connecting onto it too. That was huge. Fluffy trying to find the kill. Four members is going to be enough for our Fire to commit to this Lord. My goodness, Onik, they pull the trigger on the Roamer here, and Aura Fire instantly understands that they have utilized all, if not most, of their resources on to the Roamer. Kabuki, 1-7-1, and one, but it doesn't matter at this point of the game. He deals exactly the same amount of damage because we've gone to a 25-minute game somehow in this series. Onik have thrown their lead and it's up to Aura Fire to utilize this evolved Lord. Oh, there's a chance for Aura Fire to come back from this. But the problem is, right, even if Onik Esports are in the defense, if they're in defense mode, Drion has the better high ground, right? He has the, uh, the Feather Airstrike to be able to defend really well. And Aura Fire, they're going to be left to try and dive in. But even if they do so, it could cause a counter play by Onyx Esports. It's crazy. If you take a look at the items, again, it's, it's just everyone, even the roamers. 25 minutes in the game, and everyone has full items. The immortalities here are basically the only thing we should focus on because these are constantly going to be swapped in. But wait, there's a very interesting item change from CW. DHS. He actually got the DHS now. He sold the blade of Hepta season. This is a very good move in the later stage of the game up against Aura Fire's tankier frontline members. DHS with maximum HP damage is going to be a bit more impactful than the Hepta season. That was very good for Onik when they had the lead. Now it's completely gone. Now they need to just go for a team fight, uh, you know, a team fighting item. And that's what they want, went for. Can Onik defend this one? Lord charges in the bottom base turret. It will fall very soon. Onik now will deal with the Lord first. Seems like Aura, they're not uh, going instantly for the fight. Taking this turret time now is Aura Fire. Perhaps might look for the mid side turret. Onik still defends it well. They have really good high ground and they have really good wave clear, right? Okay. Aura Fire, because of the hand slow, they are going to get an inhibitor turret in the bottom side and a second tier turret. But if Aura Fire commits too hard onto this, it could be as easy for Onyx Esports to turn it back around. And look at Keyboy already just trying to play around with Aura Fire, looking for a proper end gauge. Fluffy trying to find the cheeky flank, cancelled out by Kyrie. Now, Chai with the Blazing Duet does not really melt anyone just yet. Take a look at the Call Alter Pop. Oh, Keyboy looking for the re engage, perhaps, with that concealed play. Does not get the opening that he wants. Now they, again, hold their composure, composure once again. They defended really well. Onik were able to micromanage the waves to a point where they clear out every single one, only losing their base turret. One, technically. Sure, the tier twos were taken away by Aura Fire as well, but the main uh, structures that they need to prioritize to defend has to be just those base turrets. And they will still have a map pressure lead, or, you know, have more map pressure in this game with two base turrets standing, right? Mid and top, both going to be constantly shoving towards Aura Fire. So Aura are going to be at a disadvantage still here, but they are actually going to be able to go for the commitment here. Onik might have made... Oh, no. Reset. Aura reset the Lord what? right on time. Beatrix showed up on top. That was the moment for Aura Fire to really, really uh, you know, punish Onik. But 
in the end, it's now back to even. No, it's actually back to Onik with this advantage with the low, uh, with the top lane pushed in. It's not good. It's not good. Now you can see that the lap lap of Fluffy is forced to go back into that position, forced to clear. But look at the interesting and peculiar positioning coming in from Onik Esports. Are they looking for a pickoff, perhaps? They might, right? I mean, let's see here. I mean, Dreon already clear mid, so let's see where he rotates. But no, it seems like, no, it seems like they're just okay. They're just okay. And take a look at Kyrie and Boots here, being the guards of the Lord here, trying to control, have more control. Will they commit to this? I don't know. It's just the Lord dance at this point. Kyrie doesn't have the immortality, so. This is something that we need to take into account, right? He actually goes for the anti Chris here. It's a good reset, but with oh, these resets constantly play. happening, it's going to be Onik with the lead here. That's a concealed play, but it's read out by Dreon, and now they have been spotted on the other side of the map, and Onik can put some more pressure down in the bottom lane. They're not sending any members, though. That bottom lane is slow pushing. If Onik don't send some members down below, this could be bad for them. Orofire can utilize the better setup to maybe commit to a team fight or even worse for Onik, maybe just steal the Lord again. Buki now already clearing bot, so yeah, you're right. That can be trouble for Onik. Let's see how they handle this one, though. Because now the Lord is at health HP approximately, so are they going to commit to this? Let's see. Onik still trying to force that fight. Now it seems like they are pulling the trigger. Tide cancelled out in the backside with the BMI escapes. Boots trying to zone the members. That's still, but now it seems like the fight goes on. Boots gets taken down, has Immortal. Tied with the blazing duets. We'll try to remember, burn and play, burn the members away. But it seems like Kyrie gets the Lord. Kabuki finds it. Three members taken down as Aura Fire responds back in game two. Now this is looking like disaster for Onyx Esports. Keyboy is the only one left standing. The Lord is marching in the bottom side and Chayat is the one that is left. He has enough wave clear, he has enough basic attack speed as well as damage to end the game. Onyx Esports has just made a huge blunder. Say hello to game three. Aura Fire forcing Onyx. Number eight standings in as of now. Force the number one standings in the league for a game three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MPL ID season 11. What a performance by Aura Fire, able to come back from 10,000 gold lead at one point, a 10,000 gold uh, deficit. My goodness, Aura Fire just took these team fights and they were able to punish Onik back and forth. You can see Yeb with a massive face palm. Wow. I feel the same way, Yeb. The, Onik. Four, the first point for Aura game-wise. Oh, no, no, never no, mind, never not. mind, never mind. But it's up against number oh. one. It's yeah. still an impressive so feed. You can that. see the Don't emotions run hard. wild on Pa Levy and CL mostly here as they were in tears right before that or right, be right after the end. But I can't help but, you know, s stay it again with Yev face palming like that. It was Onyx game to lose. They completely threw the game with these decisions that were 